and welcome to clickcentral.com. Uh, this is the second video of two talking about the calendar with as of flags. Uh, the first video took you for a bit of a presentation, just giving you the the theoretical basics of, of how this calendar is different to the others um, that you may have seen. Um, the sort of standard calendars that are out there, that are the sort of the basic ones that you use at the beginning of your clip view life. This video is taking you through the actual script that I use to create the Azov calendar. This script is available in the community. I will put a link um, to this particular page on the comments section. And here you can pick up the QVW, which is what we're going to be going through today. And all those, also the QVS script, so you don't need a license to look at that. Uh, the QVW does give you a few working examples. Okay, so let's jump into the ClickView document. And we're straight into the script. I'm going to take you through the different tabs which we will use to build up this calendar mainly. I also, in this example, put in a, a very basic fact table so you can test um, the different flags. And there's also a couple of extra tables here to do a to and from date, which allows you to say, I want every day from the 1st of March to the 25th of September, and it will pick every day in between. But the main part of the calendar obviously is this big table in the middle and more importantly all these different flags that allow you to very easily within your click expressions compare periods periods so running through the script basic main setup um, you can obviously configure your dates here i tend to go for a dd month 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 form because i think that's less ambiguous than a date date month month scenario because you don't know which way around they are okay so here in the setup we are configuring the financial month date in, in this start date in this instance it's april and we look at the the calendar to start and end date obviously you can hard code these if you want to or you can pick these up from a fact table min and max date as you normally would moving on to some very simple mapping tables we looked at you know which one is the weekday uh which is the weekend very very basic stuff Special dates is a new for 1.5. Um, this is again setting up mapping tables which work out the basic holidays that you can use. Now I've used holidays here, you know, holiday group, holiday label. So I've got the Easter, Easter, and I can put down the date. And you can also repeat that for each Easter moving forward in time. But you could use this for any sort of special dates that you like even holidays or maybe it's a sort of working weeks you know it's like a four week five week month that kind of thing you can use them these sort of special dates however you want to, to create those additional labels and addition, additional metadata around your calendar calendar load here is a very basic calendar load this is what you would normally be using um, with click view um, this just sets up a very standard basic calendar with all the different variations of the day that you can imagine. Some additional things here, cumulative month, cumulative quarter is very handy. So at the beginning of the calendar, it starts off at month one, it rolls up to month 12, then it continues to month 13, etc., etc., which makes month on month reporting very, very simple. Again, with quarter, do that as well. You don't have to do year, obviously, because that does it automatically for you, and same, so does date. Um, but month and quarter, you need to add these in. But like I said, this is just a very, very standard calendar, which is going to create 365 rows per calendar year that you've got. OK, so these map into and previous business dates all around the, 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 the business days um, within the source document. When we looked at the original mapping, we looked at what is a business day, is it a weekday and so on and so forth. Um, and we also have that in special days, dates as well. Is it actually a business day or is it a holiday? So here we just bring back some very basic when was the last business day of the month, quarter and year. Previous business day, this took a little bit of doing, but the idea around it is basically if you want to look at, I want to go five business days ago and you're on the Tuesday, well, it's not five days ago because you've got the weekend and you potentially might have a bank holiday weekend as well. So you're going to count back the number of business days from the actual day that you're looking at. It took a little bit of doing, but basically what we set up here is a sort of a cumulative value um, for each date and work out what the offset is. And I've here so go up to about 20 days. If you wanted to go further, you can add more lines and just, just tweak the code. It's very straightforward how it sort of works this out. 
So the next tab, Cartesian product, is where the is where click creates a many-to-many -many link. And again, if we looked at the previous video before, I explained what a Cartesian product was. Um, and obviously, you understand from that why we're we're doing this. Um, but just to recap for people who haven't seen the video, if we have three days in a standard calendar, a Cartesian product would look like this. So you've got every key day and every possible key day. In other words, every single combination of one, two, three. So the way they do that is we get all the different key dates from the fact table we just loaded, well, the calendar table we just loaded, um, and then we join it to itself, but we, we break the, the actual key to link. So there's no key to link on, and, and by doing that, it explodes that standard, one, two, three, into something that looks like this. And it, like I say, it's very straightforward to do. Then once we've done that, we bring back some standard fields and create start and flags and other basic things that we need to know. We bring in this mapping stuff that we need to know in the next two tabs, uh, which is really key to get, getting these flags in there. But we need these sort of points to help us create these flags. So these next two tabs are really where the, the hard work is. Here's where we're creating up the different flags. We've got point in time and previous period. So point in time is quite straightforward. This is one that would use a lot. Sorry about the tabbing, by the way. The resolution is not the same as I'm used to. Um, but we, we set up the is this date flag, one that you use a lot. In other words, is the possible key date equal to the key date? This basically takes it back to a standard calendar if you use this flag. But we create other flags as well. So is it holiday group, holiday labels, this week, this month, this quarter? And again, it's just saying the day that you've selected, I want it to be this week or I want it to be this month comparative to the, to the day that you've selected. So there's a number of different flags there. And as you can see, all it's doing, it's checking the key day against other possibles. So sometimes we'll use the possible key date. Sometimes we'll use these flags, week start, weekend, uh, and additional flags as well. And it's just saying, is the possible is the key date within a certain range of possible key dates and that's what's really key we're checking is the key date within a range of possible key dates and if it is we're just flagging it as a one and if it isn't it's a zero previous periods text this a step further let's go to the top let's say the key date is the 6th of january and we want to look at the previous day minus two so two days before well that's the 4th of january so that flag is setting it to say well what was it and that's the previous period and it's the same with point in time as well it's saying is this possible key day within the range of what we want to look at and if it is then it flags it as yes and it knows then to go backwards flag previous week comparative Minus one. The, these M, M1s are not months, by the way. They're always minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. So it's previous week minus one, which is last week, and that's two weeks ago. And that's how it sort of works out. It's, it's That's the logic around this naming convention. So the key date is the 23rd of Jan, and it's the previous week. So the possible dates that we've got, so it's comparative as well, so the 23rd of Jan will have been at some point midweek. It won't be uh, at the actual you know, Monday to, to sort of Sunday kind of time frame. So it's saying the possible comparative is the 13th, 14th, 15th and 16th of January. And that's all for the same key date that the user selects. So just to run through these, I'm going to go through them in detail, but previous day previous business day hopefully it does what it says on the tin which this is missing out bank holidays and weekends and so on but you can set that to whatever you want it to be um inclusive so that's sort of a point in time where was what we are now and then five days ago or something like that but that's sort of what we're on now five days ago and all the dates in between those days as well um so it's not just a day and day comparison so it's the inclusive part Exactly the same with the previous business day, so it's skipping any non-business days. You could look at the last 20 business days, for example, or last five business days, which is very good for rolling, some rolling measures. We've got previous months in here as well. 
Um, previous month comparative, again, comparative means that if you've got the 15th of the month, then the previous month comparative will be the month before the 1st to the 15th, depending on what you've got selected. So these last ones as well, so we've got the comparative and the last. Okay, so we've got the 6th of January 2013. Um, last month would be the 6th of December uh, 2013, which is a month ago, all the way through to the 6th of January 2014. So it's sort of inclusive, and it brings it back that way. So these and the idea of this this table really now is to sort of give you ideas of how you can expand that. And obviously, on all of these, I may have only gone back so many so many months, twelve months. But if you want to go back twenty four months, you can. You can just add the extra flags in there and expand that as you want to. Here we create a couple of extra tables: the from and to dates, which allows users to select. I want to select from the first of January to the thirty first of March. And it will then select all the dates within that date range, which is really handy if you want to create that kind of calendar on your user interface. Finally, what we'll do is clear it, clean everything up. So we're dropping a lot of fields that we don't need. We're also looking at the flags as well, because if you've got a row within your calendar that has no flags whatsoever set to one, then you could quite easily argue there's no point having that row in the in the final output. So what this does, it looks through all that and it reloads the data and makes sure that any lines that are not needed are dropped at this point. Okay, so associated in action, we can look at the date selections. Let's try and find something that we may have some data for. Let's go back to 2013. Yep, and we select, is this date? So we've got 6th of January 2013, but we've got all this data is still possible because we've got no flag selected. So if you select the is this day, it will bring back the 6th of January. Is this month? That will be the, the whole of January. Yep, you can see that over here. And we've got some information flags to say, you know, is is it a weekday? No, it's not. It's a weekend, so it's not a business day, it's not a holiday. So we can see what it is as well on that day. We can look at previous periods. So we've got the 6th of January if we want to look at the previous day. Is the 5th of January. And then two days ago is the 4th of January. So you can see how these flags are working. And then from an example set analysis point of view, let's pick a date that we know we've got some data for. And there we go. We've obviously got some no data for... So we've got what was the the uh, the results for today, what was the results for yesterday, what was the results month to date, previous month to date, so on and so forth. And then we can see from that set analysis examples, that is now what you need to do to create all these different expressions. So this becomes very much intuitive to what you're seeing written down to actually what it is compared to the, the other set analysis that what people are used to, the more complex set analysis. So I hope everyone's found that useful. I appreciate it's a lot to take in. Hopefully it'll give you a bit of a taste of what it can do. Obviously download the file, read the comments, play around with it, ask questions of me and the community. Lots of people are you know, are replying to comments on these posts as well, as well as me. Uh, a lot of people are using it. Um, and yeah, hopefully that will, will help you and in your dashboard design going forward. Thanks very much for watching.